Hi, this is Anne with what I expect will be the first of many uh, anagrams on using Cloud9 for C++ development. The last time I taught this course, we downloaded and installed um, a local inter integrated development environment called CLion. And um, personally, I like CLion a lot. It has a lot of features. It has one huge downside is that when you're working in CLion on your own machine, um, it's extremely difficult for me to help you with your code. Whereas, um, I think we all know, because I believe you've all used uh, Cloud9, with C9, I can drop in and do a house call at almost any time. So we are going to start this semester using Cloud9 for our C++ development. I am hoping that we stick with it all the way through, and because uh, changing is never any fun. But um, this is, this is, I will be learning some of this along with you or just ahead of you. And so um, I will be trying to explain things as we go along. When you first create your, uh, your Cloud9 C++ workspace, you should come up with a readme page that looks like this and a file structure that looks like this over here. Um, this is the readme file and it directs you to do a command line terminal build uh, of your code. Um, some of this will make sense after you read the, the textbook, which talks about the fact that your C++ code has to get compiled into object code and then linked into machine executable code. The book kind of glosses over the fact that there's both a compile step and a link step, but that does happen. And then finally you have an executable that will run. So um, what this readme file says is that you should come down here to the uh, terminal, the bash terminal, and type the word make, okay? And you'll see some files appear in the file structure on the left, the navigator on the left when I do this. Okay, so what happens is this runs compilers for this C file and this C++ file. So the the code for um, that they give you as a template has both. Um, they look very similar. This is plain C, this is C++, and at this stage um, you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference because we're not doing anything object oriented yet. You'll note that this is almost exactly the same code, not quite, as in the software maintenance case study in chapter one. This um, hello world code as the first thing to see when you are coding in a new environment is pretty ubiquitous in the programming world and particularly in C, C and C++. Um, one thing, one way to look at moving from COSI 1010 to COSI 1030 is that kind of like in a video game you're leveling up, but um, I don't know that it's going to feel like that right away. Um, in some ways, it may feel like you're, you're gearing down or leveling down. And I think the right uh, metaphor may be that you're going from driving an automatic to driving a stick shift. Uh, it is easier and takes a little less mental processing to drive, a, to drive an automatic. But once you have learned how to drive a stick shift, you not only can drive that stick shift, but but you not only but you probably have an easier transition to driving everything from a tank to an 18 wheeler to a tractor, um, possibly even a snow machine because you need to know how to use your clutch. So um, you are learning something that's closer to the machine this semester that requires a bit more work on your part and that essentially will, in many times, compared to the JavaScript you've been using, feel kind of clumsy or like you're programming with one hand tied behind your back. But there's a reason for that. Um, C++ is a high performance language. It can be used to do everything from um, data mining to uh, high performance gaming. And that's because you're working in a very, very efficient environment that requires the programmer to do more and the machine to do less processing all the time. So uh, let's see, let's just go here and um, take another look at this. We've, we've down on the terminal, we've, we've issued a make, which has gone out to our C++ 
file and our C file and compiled and linked them. And now, um, if you remember from the README file, on the command line here, we're supposed to be able to run those two um, little executable programs. So you do that with a dot and a forward slash. And this being Unix, I should be able to, once I get past the parts of this that are um, distinct, if I hit tab, that gets completed for me. And that says, hello world. And if I hit the up arrow and go back and type CPP and hit the tab key again, that also says, hello world, uh, which is not particularly useful that they had both of those say exactly the same thing. What you're running is, this is your C program. And I can change that to say, hello, C world. And in addition to, um, Oh, I guess what I should say is I've changed that file. I can save that file. If I come down here and I run the compiled program, it doesn't change because I have not rebuilt it. But if I go and make it again, and then I run it, you'll see that the output string is hello C world instead of just plain C. Now, this being cloud nine, as long as we're working with one file at a time, you actually can just hit the run button. Uh, the, the, um, there's no way for the book to talk about this because they're not using cloud nine. They, they try to be IDE neutral. Uh, but while we are working on one file at a time, you certainly have my permission to simply short circuit all this command line stuff and just hit the run button. Okay, and that says, hello, C world. And if I go here to the C++ file, and I change this line to be whoop, C++, and I hit the run button, then immediately the file is, you'll note that I get this little dot that shows that the file's not saved. If I hit the run button, it gets saved, it gets compiled, it gets linked. And down here in the output, I have below C++ world. I think that's enough for now. I'm going to stop and we'll do another anagram on the first week's lesson um, shortly.